Excellent! Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. This is my monthly builds video. I'm going to start doing this every single month or at least that is the plan. So these are my May 2015 gaming builds and I went with gaming builds because those are kind of the most popular builds when it comes to like builds and stuff. Uh, so just a couple notes to kind of kick things off here. Uh, first is that I'm doing this monthly. Second is that uh, I'm going to be using PC Part Picker in order to actually pick my parts out. You guys, if you're not familiar with PC Part Picker, you, you should be if you're into building your own computers. So I'm going to post links to PC Part Picker down in this description. Not only that though, but I also wanted this uh, video to have a bit of interaction with you guys and I want you guys to be able to provide your feedback and also uh, have some influence on the builds that I do each month. So um, what I'm also going to have going on here is a straw poll. I'm going to post that in the live chat right now. And the idea is that you guys can choose kind of the parameters for the build going on next month. So um, that would be June. But there's some weird things since this is the first episode and next month is June and I'm going to be actually at Computex at the beginning of the month of next month. So uh, I can't have you guys vote because it's going to be a weird one for next month because it'll be Computex time. Um, so the, the straw poll that I just posted in chat and that will also be in the video's description that you guys can vote if you're watching this in the future. Uh, you can just choose which of the two builds I go over today you actually want me to put together. Spoiler alert, it doesn't matter. Um, I wanted to do that, but it really doesn't matter. I already have the parts for one of these builds, and I guess it's instead of you guys actually voting, it's more just guessing. Um, but this is what I'm going to be doing in the future, so you, you'll have more influence. But um, I guess that kind of summarizes what this is all about. Um, let's just let's just press on ahead with our first build, uh, which is actually an AMD build. So let's jump over to PC Part Picker. I'm logged in and I have some saved parts lists over here. So you can see uh, I've got some of the older ones. I, I originally did this back for the holiday builds um, right right around uh, Black Friday in 2014. Um, so let me jump to the first one here, which is a, a, an AMD base build, $700 price point, and these are both gaming PCs. Uh, another theme that I went for with this particular, uh, t with today's builds, was that they're both micro ATX. And micro ATX is a form factor that I kind of like because it's a little bit smaller, but it's not like as limiting as mini ITX. And uh, if you're building a simple gaming PC and all you really need is like, you know, a, a basic video card in there, not a ton of expansion, I think micro ATX is a great option. So let's just run down this. I went with an AMD FX 6300 for the processor, um, which is less than a hundred bucks, um, depending where you buy it, of course, six core, uh, AM3 Plus, I didn't want to go with FM socket on this time around just because I wanted the full-fledged, not integrated graphics part. Uh, 3.5 gigahertz, and I think it turbos also up to like 4.1 or 4.0 or something like that as well. Uh, you know, it's got, got your cache on there and all that good stuff. And it's a true six core processor. So um, this is the foundation for lots of builds out there. Um, to go along with it, I picked out this ASRock motherboard. This is a 970M Pro 3 Micro ATX board, and I believe there's some pictures of it over on Newegg. Yes, there are. Um, which is a pretty nice looking board here. As you can maybe see, it's all black. Uh, it's got four DIMM slots, which I really wanted to have. It's got your full complement of six SATA ports as well. SATA Rev 3, six gigabits per second port, so you can attach a bunch of uh, SSDs to this if you wanted to. Uh, other than that, you also have these uh, your, your expansion slots, for, which are laid out a little bit differently. You actually have a, a buy one slot at the top, which I think is okay, because you can drop a card on there. Uh, the second slot here is going to be where a graphics card goes. And that also leaves you a fourth slot down at the bottom if you wanted to do another expansion card in the future or something like that. But uh, only 65 bucks for this on Newegg right now. So I think that's a pretty good deal. And um, one nice thing about PC Part Picker is it will warn you uh, if you have possible compatibility issues. So this is saying the AMD 970 chipset motherboards might not be might need a BIOS update, but you should be okay with this one because the 970M Pro 3 only came out like literally a month or two ago. Um, so they should all be updated and they should all be compatible with FX6300. For memory, I just went with a basic uh, eight gig kit from G-Skill. Nothing special or fancy about this as you can tell from the very small picture that I pulled up. Um, this is just a really simple uh, eight gig kit, P uh, DDR3 1600, which is all the speed you'll need. You're not gonna be running integrated graphics off this, so you're fine. You don't have any heat spreaders or anything like that, but it's black PCB, so it's still gonna look okay. Um, for this build, since I was going more for the budget, I did not really uh, spend too much time. Oops, that's the, that's the other build. Um, I didn't spend too much time like focusing on like 
making sure everything looks pretty. Um, for this, for the other build, I did a little bit more of that. Uh, but for solid state, for storage drive, for storage, we have a Crucial BX100. This is a newer SSD. Look at that rating. Well, it's only two ratings, but five stars. Uh, and this one is just a really good bang for the buck. So again, you got a sub uh, $100. This will load. Come on, new egg load. You're supposed to have fast loading times. Uh, so yeah, you, you get you get what sub $100. What is the actual price point on this? Yeah, less than 100 bucks, depending where you buy it, of course. Uh, 250 gig SSD, SATA Rev3, nice and fast. And even though this is a budget drive, it's going to be going just as fast as many of the uh, other SSDs that you can get out there that are F3. So I like having an SSD. I didn't go with a um, with mechanical storage for this one, and that was specifically because this was a budget build. And when you're going for a budget build and you're looking at storage, I think it's better to invest in an SSD up front because you'll get that speed out of it. And chances are, if you're building your own system, that you can find a 500 gig 3.5 inch drive somewhere like lying around it's like get one of those from your old system or something reformat it repurpose it and you'll be good to go that or you know you can always add on a uh, you can add on a, a mechanical drive to this if you want to up the uh, storage because you will want something besides that 250 gig SSD uh, here's the big daddy of the bunch though which is this uh, Sapphire Radeon R9 290 and oh my gosh this is 240 bucks right now at Newegg um, and even you, you can add another $10 promo code to it and there's a $20 mail-in rebate. Now, originally I turned off the mail-in rebates, which is another cool feature you can do on PC Part Picker if you don't think you'll ever turn them in. So the actual list price is $270 for this, um, but then you get a $20 mail-in rebate card and then another $10 off with the promo code that's going on right now. But R9 290, custom design cooler from, from Sapphire, which I think is very important for a 290 or a 290X. I like the aftermarket ones a lot better. Three fans. This is going to be a beast, and when you compare it to the other cards in the range right now from AMD, or from NVIDIA, I should say, like a, uh, a, a, a which you're basically looking at a 960 or a 964 gig, um, I would definitely go with an R9 290 for this price, especially the aftermarket one from Sapphire. Um, it's overclocked. It's either overclocked out of the box or you can overclock it. Core clock is 1,000, but you should be able to overclock this one very nicely as well. But... Uh, I like that card. I think that's the that's the most pricey item in this build, and that's pretty normal for a gaming build is to spend a lot more on the graphics card than you might uh, other things. Lastly, uh, for the case, I went with the Cooler Master Silencio 352. Uh, I went with this one because I have some experience with it, and I know it's a good case. Here's somewhere where I spent a little bit more money. This is 70 bucks. You can actually get it for like 60 bucks. I think at some of the other. Uh, online retailers, but it's a silent case, so it's going to keep everything quiet. It's got sound dampening. It's got a couple fans that are included, um, the extra flow fans, which are nice and quiet. So this is going to get the job done. It's not going to be like flamboyantly stand out, like like over the top, crazy looking or anything like that. And uh, yes, you could save a little bit of money. You could get a fifty or forty dollar case that will do the job just fine. But I like some of the little added uh, benefits you get with the Silencio 352, mainly that it um, will give you a much quieter experience overall than some of the bare bones cases. Finally, we need a power supply, of course. And for that, I have this Thermaltake Smart 650 watt. Went with a little bit higher wattage. Um, I was originally going to go with like a 550 for this one. Uh, but I went with a little bit more because it is an R9-290 in there, which does draw a bit more power. This one's 650 watt. It's 80 plus bronze certified, so it's going to stay nice and efficient. And you can get it for as little as 48 bucks at Micro Center. Granted, that's with the mail-in rebate. But at Amazon, you can actually get it for 55 right now. Plus five bucks shipping and handling. So nice solid power supply. Again, 80 plus bronze. It's from Thermaltake, which is a reputable company. So you know it's going to have good interior build quality and all that good stuff. And all that stuff right now... $700. Actually, it was less than $700 when I originally put all this together, um, but that is just kind of goes along with building your own system is that these prices are going to fluctuate. So this build should be about in the $700 range going forward. And again, you can click on the link in the uh, description to check out the PC Part Picker build. And uh, I think anyone going with a system like this, you're going to have a really good experience for only 700 bucks. Now, a couple other things about these builds. I'm not including the peripherals, uh, monitor, keyboard, and mouse. So you will need that sort of thing. Preferably, you can carry that over from an old system. And I'm not including an operating system as well. If you need to get up and running and off the ground, you can go with Windows 10, uh, the preview edition right now, which you can install for free. However, you will need an operating system at some point in the future as well. That's going to kind of be the theme for all of these builds. They're just going to be the hardware. But so be it. Um, that's, that's build one, which is a $700 AMD build. 
And at this point, before we move on to build two, I do have a sponsor for today's video. So uh, I would like to pause briefly to recognize them. That is lynda.com. And if you guys didn't already know, lynda.com is an online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business technology and creative skills. Uh, via this sponsorship promotion, you guys can get a 10-day free trial. You can go to lynda.com slash Paul. Uh, I have already been using some of their tutorials to learn new tips and tricks for video editing, uh, but you could even like go and learn an entirely new field if you wanted to, like uh, CAD, for example, Computer Aided Design. Uh, Linda sorts the available courses based on topic or by author or by software or skill level. So even if you're a beginner at something like CAD and you've never done it before, you can locate videos that you can still jump into and uh, understand easily. As always though, you can try out any of the courses that are available on lynda.com by clicking the sponsor link in this video's description or visiting lynda.com slash Paul. That is always also a great way to say thank you to lynda.com for supporting Paul's hardware as well as other uh, YouTube channels out there because they do do a lot of support for us and they keep us running and able to do videos like the one I'm doing right now. Okay, enough of the sponsor spot. Let's move on to the second build, which is a little bit more expensive. It's also an Intel and Nvidia build. And uh, let's just jump right over. Oh wait, I'm still on the May build. Let's go with this one. All right, uh, here's the May $1,200 build. This is a 4690K, which is kind of like your, uh, I, I don't wanna say bang for the buck, cause you like, it's still somewhat expensive. You're gonna pay over 200 bucks for a 4690K but you can't overclock it. And I think that's one of the, the biggest benefits. And if you're considering anything in the like say 150 to $200 range when you're looking at Intel processors, I would say just save a little bit more, get that K skew, cause then you can jump into overclocking and you can get a lot more performance out of the processor. So um, anyway, that, that's what we're starting with CPU wise is a 4690K uh, and it's available, wow, Micro Center. If you live near Micro Center, Go pick one up in store, 190 bucks there. Uh, but you can see the price range here is all in the kind of low to $225 to $230 range. Uh, for a, let's do motherboard next actually. Uh, for motherboard, since this is a micro ATX build again, I'm going with dual micro ATX builds today. Uh, we have this MSI Z97M-G43, uh, LG 1150 of course, Z97 chipset, and uh, a cool little board from MSI here. I like this board. Uh, black and blue color scheme overall, and that is important, which I'll come back to when we get to the case. Um, but again, micro ATX, uh, it's got integrated graphics of course, thanks to the iGPU on the Intel processor. Uh, you got a couple expansion slots here for PCI Express, uh, so you can drop in, of course, your graphics card, or if not, you can uh, you can also get a bit of expansion there. You got your full complement of six SATA ports uh, as well, and just a nice solid little board. They have a gaming series version of this as well, which is a bit more expensive, and it is also red and black. Uh, this one's only $111 at Newegg though right now, so you're going to save a little bit of money there by not going with the gaming series, and it still does everything you want, and it's still going to overclock just as good as the gaming series board. So there's that one, the Z97MG43. Uh, and then I also wanted to do an aftermarket cooler on this one. Now the default for an aftermarket cooler, if you want bang for your buck, is almost always gonna be your, your Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus or Hyper 212 Evo uh, is what they've upgraded it to now. That's about 30 bucks for another $10. And this is kind of going along with the theme of this build, which is like, I wanted bang for your buck. I wanted a lot of performance in there, but I'm willing to spend a little bit more on this build to give you something like, like a, a nicer looking system because I do have a windowed side panel case. So for that reason, I went with this Enermax uh, cooler, which is the ETS T40BK, um, which comes with a blue LED fan, uh, but also a nice black finish overall. And it's only about 10 bucks more than a Hyper 212. And these are very good coolers too. So I think it looks a lot nicer. You don't get that kind of unfinished copper and, and aluminum. Uh, you get a much cleaner look overall. And, uh, and I've worked with these, they do a great job cooling. This is 50 bucks at Newegg, but I think, yeah, NCIX US has it for 40 bucks. Good deal there. Uh, and it's in stock, that's very important. Okay, let's get rid of those and let's move on to memory and storage. All right, so for memory, uh, again, I wanted to give you a little bit more with this build. So instead of eight gigs, we went up to 16 gigs. Now you'll see builds sometimes, uh, especially on PC part picker for some reason that, that go with a single stick. Like, so they would have a single 16 gig stick of memory instead of two eight gig sticks or a single eight gig stick instead of two four gig sticks. And I've always thought that was kind of weird. Like you got dual channel, you're you're really hurting your memory bandwidth by going with a single stick. Granted, you leave yourself more upgrade room in the future. So maybe something to consider there, but the, the motherboard I've chosen here has four DIMM slots. 
So no problem with going with a 2x8 gig kick. That'll give you 16 gigs, and you can even upgrade it in the future. You've got two empty slots, so you're not going to be hurting. Uh, I went with the HyperX Fury memory here from uh, Kingston or Kingston's HyperX line. It's DDR3 1866. Um, again, with memory, like 1600, you're fine, but I'll often also search in the 1600, 1866, even 2133 range, because you'll find faster memory sometimes discounted, and if it's available and it's roughly the same price, go for a little bit faster memory. But the HyperX Fury line, I really like the look. They got black PCBs, they got nice low-profile black heat spreaders, uh, and they look really cool. So, again, going a little bit more towards the looks with this build. All right, for uh, storage, again, I got to have me an SSD in there. So probably all the builds that you'll see me doing are going to have at least an SSD at minimum. Um, and uh, for this one, I went with the Kingston, Hyper, uh, the Kingston HyperX Fury 240 gig SSD, uh, you know, keeping with a the Kingston theme here. This one's a pretty basic black and white color scheme on it. 240 gigs, SATA 3. I believe it's got a Fizon controller. Oh, no, this one has an SF2281. Actually, this is the wrong... This is the wrong SSD. They have two Fury, S Fury SSDs. And since I know I'm going to be building this one, I think the one I'm getting is actually the newer one that has some red on there. It's okay, though. This is a good one, too. Uh, this one's only 95 bucks for a 240 gig. Uh, it uses a Sandforce controller, which uh, does a good job. You'll find some faster SSDs out there, and, and their new version of the HyperX Fury one is a little bit faster. So I think for the final thing, I'm probably going to go with that one. But this one does a good job, too. And uh, I'll see if I can update this... Uh, this link here. Actually, maybe PC Part Picker didn't have the new Fury on there because it is a very new release, I believe. All right, but there's your SSD. Moving on down, I wanted to also include some storage here, uh, some mass storage. So we got a WD Black Series, two terabyte, 3.5 inch drive. You can get this as little as 115 bucks. And uh, <clears throat> if you're using a, a mass storage mechanical drive like this, you'll often see the blue drive the drives, the green drives that people will go for. And like, Again, that's cool, enough, but if you're loading games, you'll find a 7200 uh, RPM Black Series drive does give you a noticeable, appreciable bump in speed, uh, load times and that sort of thing, compared to the green drives or the blue drives, which use a lower spindle speed. Uh, and the Black Series drives also, generally speaking, are, are slated to have longer lifespans, and I've always, I've always liked the Black Series, so that's why I went with that one. And it's a two terabyte drive for a little over hundred bucks, not too shabby at all. Okay. Moving right along here, uh, we went over storage. Oh wait, I'm back to the I'm back to the AMD build. How did that happen? Getting confused. That's okay. All right, uh, we went over storage. Now we're going to talk about the graphics card. Uh, for this one, uh, since we were going with an, an Intel processor, I went with an NVIDIA graphics card. Also, it's a GTX 970. The 3.5 gigabytes uh, issue. Uh, memory issue aside, the 970 is still a fantastic, excellent card. Uh, it tears up games like GTA 5 and, and all the newest games. So uh, I think that is a great option. And here again, rather than going with the gaming series, I went with uh, this non-gaming series from MSI. It still has an aftermarket cooler. It's a little bit simpler design, but it is black and blue. And again, I'm going with the color scheme for this build. So that's kind of why I went with this. It's also a bit cheaper. Um, it's, it's a good 20, 30 bucks cheaper than the gaming series ones. And I think it looks perfectly fine. It still it doesn't have a backplate, but it has a black PCB on the back. If I can pull that image up here, yeah, black PCB on the back. Nice looking card, and the aftermarket cooler is going to keep it quiet. And, and I like the GTX 970, so that's why I threw that one in there. Uh, and you, how much is that right now? Goodness, uh, as cheap as 305 right now. You can get it on Amazon. Ooh, with Prime, cool, very nice. Um, and then lastly, we have case and power supply. So here's where uh, actually this build kind of started off was with the case, which is the Bit Phoenix Aegis, a a Aegis, Aegis, whatever it's called. You know what I didn't do is I didn't switch back to showing you guys what the heck I'm talking about. That's important. Uh, all right, so <laughs> let me show you the MSI graphics card since I don't think I actually showed you any of that. All right, there's the MSI graphics card. Closer look again, black and blue. And since I mentioned the PCB, let's go back to that too. There's the PCB. Nice looking PCB. All right, cool. Beautiful. Moving right along, though, to the BitPhoenix Aegis, uh, which isn't available on Newegg yet, so I can't look at their pretty pictures. Uh, but here's the BitPhoenix Aegis, and it's available in a bunch of different colors. I have this case. I'm doing a build. I'm doing this build more or less in this case, and uh, it's pretty cool looking. Th this is the blue one, and color schemes. I think it's available in red, yellow, blue, white, and black. 
and maybe another one too in there. Um, but it's got a big old side panel window. It's got a bunch of stuff in there for like water cooling and so like some of these pictures they have water cooling setups going on in there. Um, but a pretty cool looking case overall. It's got glossy plastic on the front, which which some people are into more or some, some people are into less. Uh, but it's got this cool uh, BitPhoenix logo on the front, which is actually like a little mini LED display and you can put your own pictures in there and that sort of thing. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so that's the case I'm going with. It's a little bit on the pricier side. So this is $120 right now, right out of the gate. And there are uh, there's a lot of competition in this area, especially if you're going full size ATX. Um, so this is kind of one of my more like choices due to aesthetics than else elsewise, I suppose. Um, so yes, there are other uh, cases that are available out there in this price range that are comparable or even have some better features depending on what case you're looking at. Um, but I still like this one and it's new and it's got that nice window and I'm gonna do a build in it. So yeah, colors also, by the way, red, white, yellow, black, and blue. And I got the blue one because I was like, I haven't done a blue build in quite a while. Uh, to go along with that though, the Aegis, and, and when I do the actual build, I'm gonna be talking a lot about the case and my experience with the building in it and all that good stuff. Uh, but let's go back to the power supply, which just to kind of go right along with that Aegis case, there we go. Uh, I went with the BitPhoenix Fury 550 watts, which again, there's no good pictures of apparently, except for on M-Wave. How's M-Wave's pictures? Oh, they pull up over here. That's stupid. Uh, all right, so blah. The, there's some pictures. Uh, Jay actually has a, a video on the 650 watt version of this. So you guys can check that out over on Jay's Two Cents. Um, the cool thing about this power supply is that it's uh, semi-modular, but it's also got sleeved cables, like all the way down the line. So that's pretty cool. Uh, actually nicely sleeved cables, like with no heat shrink showing or anything like that. So I thought that was cool. And that's again, a little bit more of an aesthetic decision going along with this build than otherwise. But the overall price, which you guys can't see because it's blocked off right now, is $1,209 according to PC Part Picker. But that's of course subject to change over time. And those are my builds. What do you guys think? I got the $700 AMD build. I got the $1,200 Intel build. You guys are feel, can feel free to vote on my PC part picker, uh, or not my PC part picker, my straw poll uh, thingy down there and vote, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to do the, uh, the Intel build anyway. I've actually already got parts on their way for that and everything. Um, but I also want to say a big shout out before I go to all the people who have jumped into uh, Twitch chat to watch me doing this live. This is really a spur of the moment decision this morning to actually do this live. So thanks to all y'all who have jumped in there um, and hope you guys have enjoyed these builds. Feel free to post your own ideas for builds uh, in the video's description. Feel free to give me some suggestions on how I might enhance uh, this particular series because again, I do wanna do this every single month uh, and next month will be the beginning of June. I'll be at Computex, but I'm still gonna do something, something in this range. Uh, don't forget to like the video, of course. Don't forget to share it with all your friends because all of your friends probably are interested in builds too. Um, what else? Oh, you can buy shirts off of my store, which is uh, store.paulsharbor.net if you're interested. They look just like this one and I have some new ones in the works as well coming out soon. Uh, but thanks for watching this video, guys, and uh, we'll see you all next time.